Alright, so you have seen Reggie from my previous video. Today, I'm going to give a follow-up video on his lifestyle, right? Because he's actually an avid traveler. And he's not only a traveler, he's a traveler who travels around the world on low budget, okay? And not leaving his job. He's still the founder of the Financial Coconut. And welcome, Reggie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad, like, travel and work at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there are issues like I will share with you more later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The quick question here is, people always felt that traveling is a huge budget thing, right? You need to save up money for it. And they need to take annual leaves off their work. I mean, this whole idea of traveling the world without leaving your job and on a cheap budget is... It's very crazy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, yes. You can found you can be a founder of something. <laughs> be easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you are not just an employee, you know, you are the founder. Mm -hmm. Which means you also need to manage a lot of their operations activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you share like what is this idea behind this and how do you actually manage around it? Okay, so a few things, right? I think the first thing we'll, we'll talk about SMEs. Right. So MNCs uh, have a general tendency to allow you to work hybrid these days. Mm. It's easier for them, right? If you work in an MNC, uh, I think more and more of these kind of big companies, they come out to pledge that, oh, you can, you can work remote, la, you can work hybrid, la, you know, uh, once, a, once, once a week or twice a week come into the office. A lot of big companies are able to do that. Right? And what is the difference between the big companies and the small companies in this sense of things, right? Is the big companies are very process-oriented. Mm. Very, very process oriented. It means you come into the company, you will do one or two process and you just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. Right? So you are like a like a cock in the whole machine, right? Pretty much. And the beauty of that is that there's very clear measurements like, if things are moving, whether something is going along. But in a lot of SME structure, right? You know, the corridor talk is very important. Corridor talk. Yeah. Hey, hey, you finished that thing already not? Oh. Hey, that day I sent you the email, how you got seen not, right? The corridor talk is extremely important because they are not as process oriented. Mm. Uh, and then they have a lot of the kind of like, because to be fair, in a small company, the cor if the corridor talk can settle, you know, you don't really need to put in new processes, you know, software to track what is oh, going yeah. on, you know, all that jazz, right? So, so that becomes... Uh, reduce priority for a lot of small enterprises mm. but for us right right from the start we are like digital because we grew the team remotely from the very beginning right we essentially started the business and took it seriously during COVID right so we hired everybody online you know uh, we, we meetings online it was uh, two years into the business when we first had our first team meeting <laughs> it's, like, it's like and the first team meeting is not even like physical the first team meeting was online right like like everybody was tuning in. I was in Turkey. Some people were in Vietnam. Different different <laughs> places. <laughs> so everybody was like everywhere, and 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 that kind of forced us to be very process oriented. Mm. Like what is the KPIs? What are we measuring? You know what is the numbers that we need? When the date need to go out? You know everything is very tightly run, and in that sense, we also avoid last minute changes because it is very process, right? So last minute changes it affects everybody, right? So so. By building a company with that view, it, it allows you a little bit more room to play around. Because mm. in other words, I don't need corridor talk. Yeah. Don't talk also never mind, right? Just get your things done, right? And, and I think that's kind of how I built the company from the start to also allow me to kind of <laughs> move around. Mm. Yeah. So that's more like a results-based KPI rather than a time-based, right? Because I know that a lot of employers are very focused on being there in the office, like, like this work from home thing, even though it's really popular between 2020 to 2021, mm. suddenly in 2022, you see the whole shift, right? <laughs> the whole shift in opinion regarding work from home. Like last year, they were all embracing it, yeah, like yeah. saying the future way to mm. work. And, and now in 2022, they are backtracking on, yes, on that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so you want to share yeah, on yeah. that kind of... I know, I know, la, Sally, la, right? Your senior manager, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that like 50-year-old manager, Sally, is like, ah, out of sight, out of mind. La, right? so, you better come back to work. La. Efficiency is higher. Right, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're really Sally, please don't flame me, okay? But anyway, anyway, you know, this, it's a typical idea, right? So, mm. uh, I do think it's a... A few things, right? One thing is... Once people come back to, like, once COVID is slightly more settled down, now they want to start the engine, 
right? So at first, it was more like a cruising situation, right? Companies were just cruising yeah. and now they want to start the engine, they want to make more money, that's why they raise prices. Inflation don't come from random one. Uh. Company raise prices. If you look at the p &L, right, all trickle to the company, okay? So I don't believe in some weird-ass random magic in the market, okay? But, but that's a different discussion. So companies want to make more money, they want to push the employees. So now from a cruising mode, right, to move into a growth process or move into a situation where you want to like amp up the game, mm. uh, instead of changing some of their processes or improving the kind of motivation remotely, they go back to what they're familiar with. Yeah, uh. Of course. Uh, you come back to office, uh, come back to office, everything okay, race we sweet. Yeah. Right? Uh, Sally, you tell you come office. Uh. There you <laughs> so, so it becomes a... I, I, yeah, it's, it's like a track back to familiarity, right? Because mm. that's what they understand, right? But on, on our end, we take a different approach. It becomes like, a, okay, now we want to move a little bit faster, right? So we consolidate jobs, right? Part-time, part-time, consolidate, you know, do, do into something, you know, a little bit more uh, familiar, right? We, we increase our touch points, right? Let's say in the past, we do once a week calls. Now, maybe we do twice a week calls, right? So we uh, increase our KPIs, mm. Right, we we you know we do more of those things that are still result and process driven, right. and not back to the familiarity of like ah, you have not like so so it's and I just wanna like shout out to all you like management right like people in the like mid high management that immediately just get everybody back into the office right just because you can and you're familiar with it keep up with the times lah you know yeah. <laughs> you will lose talent and they all end up working for me eh. <laughs> See, I tell you I guarantee you they all will end up working for the newer younger companies that are very okay for people to come in once or twice a week mm. or you know uh, maybe once one one week in, 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 in the office once a month or something like that where we do stints we, we sort out all the planning work everything we run quickly and during this period and after that you know you carry on do your things mm. and then we just have a process touch point on those things right? people will love it yeah cool cool but how about the traveling portion, mm, mm, right? Mm. Because you you said you were traveling the world, like which parts of the world? Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so now I can safely say I travel the world a little bit more, okay? Previously, I will only uh, say I travel Asia, la, right? Uh -huh. Because it's affordable, right? Very yeah. affordable here. So um, almost every single one of your Southeast Asian countries I've kind of been, been to and uh, I don't travel like two weeks or like five days kind of thing. It's like one month, two months, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm kind of like on the go. You know, I've, right after COVID uh, ended, right? I'm not saying ended, like, but right after the restrictions were mm. a little bit more lax, right? I, I left immediately, right? <laughs> Next week, fly, right? So first place I flew to was Georgia. Georgia. Right? So Georgia uh, is in the south of Russia, okay? Like like uh, Moscow, south of Moscow. Um, and it used to be part of the USSR. And former that, USSR. Right? Former USSR. So the trains there are very cute because it's built during the USSR <laughs> period. So it's very noisy, but it looks like stuck in time. You feel like you're on a movie. Uh -huh. Okay, so... Um, I went to Georgia. Reason because uh, there were a lot of YouTubers talking about it because they're all remote workers, mm. right? And they talk about it. And I think one of the main reasons was because it's quite affordable and uh, it's a relatively convenient uh, European touch point for that price. And also, I think um, you can stay for one year. right? So that's one of the reasons why. right? So mm. I went there and you are visa-free for one year. So Singaporeans, Malaysians, you listen to this show, you realize that this is a one-year visa-free yeah. trip. Right? And I just wanted to go out for a questionable amount of time. <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to go out, but I just had to go. Right, I was telling my listeners, I was like, I cannot give you any more content. I'm stuck on this island for two years. My brain is dead. I need to go out. Oh. Yeah. So, so then I flew to Georgia. I stayed there for two or three months. Had a lot of Georgian wine. Uh, apples were amazing. Uh, just stayed in Tbilisi. Eventually, it got a little bit too cold for my liking oh. because I wasn't prep for that kind of winter. Okay. So I ended up staying in Istanbul. I went to Turkey for mm. another two, three months. Yeah. And then eventually I came back to Singapore to shift to Malaysia. <laughs> so so I was already staying in KL at that okay. you know, time before COVID. All right. So uh, long story short, I was staying in KL time before COVID and then COVID happened. So I came back to Singapore thinking it would be a two month thing. <laughs> Turns out, become a two-year thing and I come out becoming a founder of a podcast network. <laughs> right? So, it's a lot of those shit. Um, but right after the Turkey trip, I shift back into KL and yeah, I just kind of settled in there. Recently, I, I was part of the Heathrow rubbish. So, I flew to London for two weeks at first thinking that I'm going to go to my friend's wedding and mm. blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, lah. 
part of the part of the Heathrow rubbish. You know, my flights got cancelled. You know, there was protests, everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I ended up staying there for two months. Two months. Yeah. So I so I had a lot of these kind of like few months, few months stints in a lot of different places. <laughs> so the general idea of travel is that it will incur a lot of money. I mean, these places you've been to, they are not Asian countries. The relative cost of living is much higher. Mm. How do you actually navigate around that? Okay, specifically, let's be very clear. Georgia and Turkey are like Central Asia, you know, mm. or like some people call it Eurasia because they're kind of like in between yeah. both sides. So they're actually not too expensive. I flew to Turkey because of the inflation. I wanted to experience inflation for myself because because they, you know everybody know the lira is is on a is on a downtrend yeah, right, yeah, for yeah. for a while, and I flew in because I want to experience the hyperinflation because everything is story is a textbook, you know uh. all the textbook tell you oh you know hyperinflation ah like very hard lah blah 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 I was like so. <laughs> so I want to go there and see for myself, and a uh, cute little story for all of you when I was there. I was uh, having uh, bread and like tea, which is very normal for mm. them. It's like a usual breakfast. So after I ordered, I sit down there, I was eating, right? The lady boss took down the sign <laughs> and went to the back and cleaned away the price. <laughs> <laughs> so immediately prices changed, right? Like, I was like, wow, that is amazing. Like because, stock market. Uh. Yeah, yeah, no, it's worse than that, right? It's like, it's like because it, it just keeps going up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right, so it's a... Uh, and, and that is me experiencing hyperinflation for myself and I think it, it gave me a lot more views and insights to how to look at some of these things. Mm. You know, and uh, I, I, thought, I thought that was amazing. But rule of thumb is if you fly to a place for five days, one week, a ticket looks very expensive. Yeah. But once you fly there for two months, a ticket is not expensive. 700, 800, one way, 1,005, whatever. You yeah. know, once you're there, you're there. Yeah. You're just going to be there. Right and and you will not feel that pain as much as compared to like a round trip turnaround. So I think that's the first thing, right? If you want to travel cheap, you gotta travel long. Okay. Amortize the cost. Yeah, amortize the cost. Yeah, you want to travel cheap, you gotta travel long. So that then kind of amortize your ticket prices. Okay, so this is the first thing. And if you travel long and within the region, it becomes even cheaper because regional travel is cheap. Hmm. Like how Singaporeans think like I ah, fly Bangkok very cheap la, you know, I ah, fly the Bali very cheap la, you know, yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. It's the same idea. So once you go to Europe, once you enter Europe or you go to like let's say Turkey or you go to anywhere, uh, if you fly within the region, it's very cheap. It's like why the Taiwanese always say they want to fly to Japan. Mm. Whereas the Singaporeans say, wow, Japan very expensive. To them, it's like a round trip turnaround. Yes. Right? So once you enter the region and you travel in a regional format, things are cheap. Right, because uh, you amortize the cost and travel costs become cheap, point to point. Okay, uh, the other thing, of course, will be lodging. Right, lodging is the biggest yes. one of the next biggest expense. You cannot stay hotel lah. Hotel very expensive <laughs> lah. Oh, yeah. every day hotel wah, cannot tahan lah. Okay, maybe when TFC become bigger, ah, then I will update you <laughs> if I have changed this habit. Okay, but at least uh, when you do Airbnb, it's okay. If you rent monthly, there's a, usually a discount. Mm. Okay, you rent monthly, there's usually a discount. Um, on average, about 30, 40%, uh, 40 a bit much, uh, maybe 30 to 20% uh, discount on the usual Airbnb prices, right? So uh, the landlords will give you that kind of discount. Uh, okay, and of course, if you rent during Lao period, it's even better. Like everybody go to Japan during the Sakura, Sakura period, right? Like, it's like spring right? or summer, spring, uh, Sakura, Sakura. By the way, uh, Shantong also got Sakura. Lah, huh? Okay, Korea also got Sakura. They're all in the same belt. Okay, You don't need to go to Japan to see Sakura. Okay, But if you go in off-season period, like autumn, Japan in autumn is off-season period, it's also very fun. It's a different way of enjoyment. It's a different experience. Uh, so Airbnb also becomes cheaper because it's loud. Right, so I think that's kind of how I see some of these things and basic ideas lah for mm. people to play with. Mm. So whatever you just said, right, is like very general stuff because that's the trend. But how about let's go more precise? Mm. How much do you actually spend on a monthly basis, like okay. in a certain city? Okay, so let's say we take Tbilisi, okay, mm. Georgia, Tbilisi. You can go and check it out. I think it's an interesting place. Uh, Istanbul also very interesting. Okay, I'll, I'll mm. talk about these two these two places because it's uh, more recent for me. Okay, so um. In, jo- in Tbilisi, during the time when I was there, I could get an Airbnb monthly for about three 400 sing. Mm. Okay? And uh, food is generally affordable because uh, as long as you cook yourself, la, 
Uh. Cannot restaurant every day outside. Yeah, of course. Okay. Anyway, the food then not very exciting. Uh. Okay, don't watch those YouTubers that you want to believe seafood very exciting, uh, all fake one. <laughs> all fake one. Lao Niang there myself, I tell you the food very boring. <laughs> it's a king curry, that's it. And then some some bread shit. Uh. No, okay, at first, okay, let's be clear, uh, no insult to the to the to the place. First week or so you will think like, wow, very interesting. Yeah. Second week, you'll be like, wow, King Kali again. <laughs> Third week, you'll be like, I want to cook. La. Give me my rice and soy sauce. You know, like, <laughs> so that kind of thing, right? But, but, because they produce, they have a very serious production of like apples, they uh, have a lot of pork, they, they rear pigs and all that. Um, so, some of these things that they produce locally, you can get it for very cheap. Mm. Right? So, if you buy local and you eat local and you rent an Airbnb that has a place to cook, then it becomes very, very affordable. You just think about it, count yourself, right? Let's say we take $400 rent a month, right? My groceries add up to maybe 100 a month. We're talking about Sing dollars. Sing dollars, ah, Sing dollars, Sing ah. dollars. So, Okay, so $400 a month and my groceries add up to about $100 a month, let's say. Uh, because, it, okay, tip, ah, clear tip is if you live in a place where there is a lot of agricultural activity, food is cheap. Yeah. Okay, the closer you are to the producer, the cheaper it is, you know, for food costs. Okay, so which is why Malaysia chicken very, very cheap because they sponsor, yeah. right? And rice is relatively cheap because they grow in Kedah, right? So same idea. In Tbilisi, in uh, Georgia, they grow apples because during the Soviet period, they were forced to grow apples, right? Because they, uh, as a whole USSR, they kind of redistribute the manufacturer, the mm. agricultural stuff. Lah. So in Tbilisi, the apples are amazing. I don't eat apples, one, uh, but I walk past the grocery aisle, <laughs> I was like, what is this smell? Smells apple got smell one. Exactly, <laughs> apple got smell one, man. I walk past the apples, I like, oh, this smells amazing. What is this? And the apples taste great. Right? Uh. And they got different, different, four or five different breed. Now you call them breed. Right? <laughs> different, different types uh, of apples and it smell amazing. Uh. Right? So if you do that, maybe another, so it's about 100 for groceries. Transport within Tbilisi is not expensive. You know, um, maybe you spend uh, $20 just to travel around. Mm. Uh, you do probably do a lot more walking. Uh, and yeah, so every other thing will be one-off. Lor. If you go to the museum or if you go to something, yeah. which after which two probably weeks, go one time. Exactly. <laughs> after two weeks, you're done. Lah, right? so I, <laughs> I tell you, okay, when you travel long term, the few things you look out for, the parks, uh. okay, the grocer, the gym, uh, and maybe some co-working space. The pharmacy. Okay. Or yeah, the pharmacy, yes. So <laughs> the few things, that's it. Yeah. Right. And what you are essentially recreating your life at different places that you go to, hmm. and not like always exploring a new way of life. It's yeah, hard yeah. for you to do that, right? So if you travel city to city, you're just recreating, and that's about the price. So if you think about it, I barely spend six seven hundred a month. Six seven hundred. Yeah, barely yeah. six seven hundred a month. You know, and wine is three dollars. One bottle. One bottle. Yeah, okay. yeah. One, three, that's why you can, you see all the armor they cook, right? They pour the whole wine inside, oh. right? It's like, wow, so expensive. No, $3. <laughs> right? Even if you're in London, okay? It's like, what? Three pounds. Right? So it, it's, it's very cheap. Wine is very cheap. Right? So uh, when you watch armor cooking videos, right? Then you know why they use those things, right? So same idea. French onion soup. Why French onion? Because onion is very cheap there. Right? So I, I just came back from, from there. So onion is very cheap. Uh, so similar in that thought process. So that is actually a much lower cost of living than Singapore, right? Yeah. I mean, when I talk about my monthly expenses being like $1,000 a month, I get shot down by people. <laughs> like, it's a miser. Yeah, yeah, well, this guy. <laughs> and then you are hearing from Reggie. Mm. It's six to 700 in a foreign city. Mm. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. And, and I will say, you can recreate at about this price, even in... Let's say Istanbul. Mm. I think I spent about that. Maybe a little bit more. Istanbul, a little bit more expensive. Maybe 800, 900. About there. Uh, you can do it also in... Uh, you can do it in Bangkok for sure. Yeah. Ho Chi Minh, Hanoi. And, and those are great places to be, by the way. I don't I don't, I don't randomly name these places. Uh, so I think so, there, there are a few options around that are interesting and you could you could do it. I think even in Bali, you could do something like that. right? So sub 1,000. Yeah, you can you can do it, you know, as a as a traveler. Right? Even now, my current expenses. You want you want me to share my current expenses? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah So currently, I live in Subang, right? I think if you listen to my podcast, you know, like I'm the the future Subang mayor, lah. Like, I keep propagating <laughs> this thing, like, Right? Okay. So if you uh, you know, if you are the ministry, you can talk to me. Uh. <laughs> can Subang a, is a city near KL, by the way. Yes, mm. yes, yes. So it's a it's a sub, suburb, lah. Yeah. So so it's like uh. 
more Pasir Ris than Pasir Ris lah. A little bit more, more out lah. Okay. <laughs> more Pasir Ris than Pasir Ris. <laughs> uh, very out there. Uh, about a 45 minute train ride into town, into KL. Okay. Okay. So it's not that crazy also. Okay. It's LRT, very quick one. Not some chachak train lah. So uh, my expenses in KL adds up to be about 2,005 ringgit. 2005 ringgit. <laughs> very manageable. Very manageable. <laughs> Okay, very, very, because my rent is about 750 Internet is expensive. In Malaysia, internet is horrible. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's horrible and expensive. Okay, very bad. Um, so it's about 150 RM for my internet. Um, yeah, and then food-wise, it's not that expensive. You can uh, yeah, buy local, eat local, cook local. Maybe adds up to another two, three hundred sing. Mm. Yeah, so you count, count, count. Uh, yeah, sub one thousand sing dollar, you can live a, a great life there. Yeah, my yeah. I I live in a three room with two balcony. Yeah, uh. three uh, three room three bedroom three bedroom apartment. <laughs> one bedroom is a guest bedroom. Okay, if you friend with me, you can come. I let you stay for free. If not, then you can uh, follow my Airbnb link. <laughs> no, I, <don't> have, don't <laughs> I need to so, visit you. Yeah, next come time and visit me. Okay, yeah. and I have a study room. Okay, uh, so I only live in one room. <laughs> and you do Airbnb? <laughs> I, I don't Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but I have a guest room and I have a study room. Okay. Okay, so that's three rooms, two toilets, and two balconies. Okay, I have one balcony and that's face a there. Condo apartment. Uh, it's an old, uh, old, con- old apartment. Like. Old you cannot, okay, cannot say condo because don't really have facilities. Oh, okay, okay, they got those uh, gathering area, like, you know, like the function room, uh, very, uh, but not very functional. But it's <laughs> gated and guarded. So, gated and guarded, yeah. yes, yes. So uh, and it's, it's very affordable. So if you really want to learn how to save money, but you don't know how, right, then this is the message from the sponsor to get some free money. I want to ask you one simple question. Do you believe in Tesla? Because you have missed the free Apple share, free Microsoft share, and even free Google share in the previous Weibo campaigns. But do you know that Weibo has upped their game again? And this time round, they are giving you $130 worth of Tesla shares. You heard that right, it's $130 worth of TSLA shares. That is the record high. What you need to do is to deposit at least 2000 Singapore dollars and make one buy order of US stock or ETF. Also, this time round, you have to complete complete an option trade so you can buy a put or a call option for the short term and at the same time maintaining your balance of 2000 SGD by not making any withdrawal orders for 30 days and you must be wondering why $130 right maybe it's related to the Tesla stock split recently from one stock into three stocks so hurry up and sign up for a Weboot account using my referral link down below all right so we talk about the idea of working remote working from home working from overseas right then there's this thing about digital nomads because you yourself, you are a digital nomad. Like, would you like to share about your experience being one? Like, what are the difficulties and what are some of the privileges that you enjoy that some of us, like normal office workers, won't get to see? First is time zone. Mm. Time zone is the worst. Worse. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you are digital nomading in like Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh or like in... Phnom Penh or you know uh, Bangkok you know so, like in the region right you're in the same time zone it's very easy to work but when I was digital nomading in like Istanbul or even I spent you know two months in London and Paris right in between them it was horrible because by the time I wake up right the guys are here afternoon already is <laughs> they finishing right so I left three hours to do stuff right so my usual recordings like, they all have to change the time right, mm. to get used to it so there's a little bit of that part that you gotta get used to Sometimes you got to wake up like crazy hours for a call, like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. And it's like everybody already like make time for you already. You know, it's like, I have no choice. I squeeze this time. Like, okay, you wake up. Okay. <laughs> right. So, you know, there's, there's, there's these realities that you have to, you know, straddle with mm-hmm. no choice. Yeah. Okay. That, that is the, the part that I think is the most annoying. Of course, the other part that is uh, a little bit, it takes a bit of a learning curve is really to uh, work without the office touch point, without the corridor chat, right? So uh, people are not as readily available. You got to ask questions in advance. You got to give everybody a bit more time to uh, come back to you. I know some people, right, when you work, immediately you want to answer one. A lot of urgent calls, very annoying. Right? You know, it's like you're doing something, right? And then someone call you, call you, hey, urgent, urgent, urgent. Ah. It's like, what's like, huh, this urgent? What urgent? The urgent, you know, right? So... <laughs> No. Another thing is there's no such thing as urgent email. Like if you can send me an email, don't tell me it's urgent. Give yeah. me time to reply. Okay, so so that is the thing that I understand. When you do something, even 
when sometimes when I want to do something when I'm in a flow state, right? I just want to get it done. Yes. I'm excited. I want to do it. I get it. But in the remote working arrangement as a digital nomad, right, that thing doesn't exist. Yeah. You cannot be calling your team all the time, right? You get very annoying. You are spending too much political capital on these kind of stuff, right? So you got to get used to having a little bit more breathing space between your work. Mm. And if let's say you really have to wait, then sometimes you may have to occupy yourself with other things, yeah. you know? So you got to get used to kind of like changing work processes back and forth. Uh, and I think these two are the main challenges that people will face. Time zones. So I would recommend you not to leave the time zone first. Mm. Be within the region first if you're new. And uh, a lot of this kind of like back and forth. Tempo difference. Work tempo is different. Yeah. yeah these two are the main challenges. Especially right? if your thing, team is larger, right? Yes. Much yes, more yes. people to manage. Yes. Then how about the privileges, the benefits and all that? Okay. First thing I want to let you know, right? You will not want to sit by the beach to do work. Right? Mm. I guarantee yes. you. <laughs> guarantee. <laughs> hot <laughs> AF. Hot. Okay. Very <laughs> hot and very dirty. Very dusty. You put your laptop there, wind blow. Oh my God. Die. All the things affect your, your Mac. You know, at first, got five year lifespan. You know, now become three years. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. So all the, all the travel influencer, all fake one. All fake. Okay. Nobody does that. <laughs> so... But there are a few good perks. One thing is, um, it's quite refreshing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you, uh, yeah, you know, every time you go to the same place, you're in the same tempo, yeah. very sad, you know. Uh, so it's quite refreshing to have new places to go, to have new places to try, you, do, you know, have uh, new restaurants to go to, you know, new things to look out for on the weekends. I think there is some uh, joy in that. Yes. Eventually, you will get to a point where you are not as excited for those things. Mm. Okay, like like when you first start digital nomading, right? You will be like, "Wow, I want to go to this place, ah! I got this event, ah! I gotta adjust my schedule for that, lah, blah, blah, blah. Normal, I get it. Just right? like a new child, right? Yeah, just like when you start investing. Uh-huh. Every day you look at the thing. Every day you are like looking, what's next? What's new? What's new? Now, ah, I'm like some uncle as an investor, eh? Yeah, so you won't like behave like a child in a new world and all that stuff, right? What What if you really get bored of it? Eventually, you will. Yeah. Eventually, it becomes less exciting, less sexy. You know. <laughs> You just be like, uh, you I want to get out of this <clears throat> place. Yes, and if okay, let's be clear. If you are in that fatigue, okay, you get travel fatigue. It's normal, okay. And by then you'll be quite senior already, lah. Mm. Okay, <laughs> so you don't really need me to tell you, uh, what to do. But okay, as a newcomer thinking about whether you want to do this, eventually you get to a point where you're tired, and it's okay to just stay at that one place for three months, yeah. day in day out, day in day out, and repeat. It's okay. Right, like uh, if you stay in Hanoi, you know you go to your favorite ban mai store, you know your favorite fur place, and just go to the gym, go mm. to the lake, Hanoi Lake, day in day out, it's fine. Yeah. Right, and so it's not about always having excitement, and then after that you want to then you know heal up and move to the next place. Then when you're ready, you move. Yeah. If not, what I would strongly recommend everybody to do is to first travel within the region, and if it gets tiring, then come back lah. Mm come back for a while because once you travel in the region it's actually very cheap mm. right and also the air flight cost is not crazy so it's, it becomes easier to do it right so you travel in the region if you are not ready to do long travels then try one month first and then you can slowly build out your stamina <laughs> two months three months because it is very very different yeah I mean the thought of it when you just start out is quite scary right because people all have fear of the unknown and especially at the at a really foreign place, you have nobody to go and seek help for. Um, just want to ask, like, what were your concerns back then when you first started this kind of digital nomad? I didn't really have a lot of concerns. Mm. I just had no idea what I was signing up for. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. I didn't really like plan and like you know. I just want. I need to get out of this place, uh-huh. right? Because I was just very tired of uh, being in the same place right. all the time, right? So I just wanted to get out. Uh, but along the way, I realized there are a few things that you can do, you know, when you're a new nomad. One is definitely to join a community, right? So, and where's the best place for communities? Hostels. Mm-hmm. Hostels are amazing. I know a lot of people, they'll feel like, ah, I don't want to share, stay in a hostel, la, bang bed, or by the way, a lot of hostels these days do have private yes, rooms. Yes. So you can live in a private room. But I strongly recommend you try the bang bed first. Not that because I love bang beds, huh, but it's just, <laughs> it's a, it's more casual social touch point. You get to meet a lot of people, right? And you get to talk to a lot of people. But okay, la, you know, if you're a Singaporean, la, then you're like very scared of all these kind of things, right? I get it. Uh. <laughs> um, so I've talked to many people, right? I know, so, I know. Yeah, if you're Singaporean, you're very scared. Yo, what if dirty? What if what? 
go for the more expensive hostel lah, right? Pay $20, you know, $10, you know, $15 a night. Um, you should get decent, decent ones, okay? In, in the region, okay? Once you leave the region, don't even bother hostels lah. <laughs> in London, you stay in the Airbnb, it's cheaper than the hostel, okay? And by, by the way, don't stay in London. Go to Wales, go to like Birmingham or somewhere, right? Go further out, nah? but that, that's a different discussion. But I will recommend you, all that being said, stay in a hostel. Like one month, two months. I think these days there are a lot of hostels that are built for work or built for digital nomads. And that is a good place to start and mm. kind of pick up from there. Right. Right? Talk to the hostel people. Talk to, you know, usually if they are built for digital nomads, right, they will have all the guides mm. physically there. Are there things that you actually miss home in Singapore when you were abroad? Like things that you hope that sometimes you are in Singapore. Very cheesy. As cheesy as it sounds, you know what I'm going to say, right? It's the food. Like. <laughs> it's as cheesy as it sounds, everybody says it. Um, but yeah, Singapore does have a wide variety of things to, to, to dine. Let's put it this way, okay? In Singapore, you go makan makan, you'll be like, I want to eat so many things to mm. choose, right? When you are traveling, you'll be like, uh, today I buy from supermarket or I cook myself. <laughs> I can't think so. It's not as available. You mm. know, the options are a bit more limited. Uh, I, I think that's the main thing that people will be concerned. So, heck for you, uh, please bring some of those like ready mix paste la, oh, you yeah. know, like those like, like I don't know, bakute, soup <laughs> thing or you know, like seasoning, uh, seasoning laksa, la, laksa la, or, like, buy some of those things and uh, bring along with you. Okay, so these days when I backpack, right, maybe half my backpack is filled with <laughs> food. Things. Yeah, because, okay, another tip for a lot of you that are traveling as a digital nomad, you tend to overpack you will overpack your clothes. Number one is overpack your clothes, okay? What you should do, two pairs of shoes. I give you most, okay? Ladies will be a heels and a sneakers. La. Guys will be sneakers and a, and a shoe. La. You know, and the shoe is really just for special occasion. Mm. If you are there, you want to go for an event or you want wine to like, and events, uh, wine and uh. dine. So you have that. One pair of shoe, one pair of sneaker. At most, I give you one flip-flops. Yeah. Please don't go and bring like so many rabak <laughs> things there, okay? And... For your clothes, right? Maybe two shirts, um, three or four, five t-shirts, a few shorts, one, one pair of pants or two pair of pants. It's good enough. Please don't overpack. Okay? You're not going to a place with no shopping center or <laughs> cannot buy anything. If you want, you can buy. This is a common experience with most uh, backpackers or digital nomads. They end up after two months traveling, right? Their baggage size shrink by half. Mm. on average <laughs> you end up having a lot of the ho- in the hostels they will have a lot of hey you want not free you want not I don't want really you want you want you want you want take or you want buy from me 5 euro or you want buy from me 20 baht you know that kind of thing so there's a a lot of these kind of uh, situations so I will highly recommend you to be very lean uh, you can buy more if you don't travel during winter it's better because when you travel in winter mm. or if you travel trans-seasonal uh, baggage will build up very yeah. because you got must bring summer clothes and bring winter clothes very bulky yeah, yeah. very bulky so if you travel during uh, spring and summer that'll be best light travel and yeah, don't put more food la. <laughs> <laughs> so food is always the main concern yes, I have yes, yes. seasoning law by bring those things that okay let, let me put it to you bluntly right a few things you must bring balachan you never balachan. knew you need balachan yeah. until you started <laughs> traveling because singapore food right a lot of things got balachan Okay, but uh, but you you didn't know. Okay, uh, of course, in the same vein with balachan, you must bring some ha chong la, right? <laughs> like so, so bring some of these like okay in this part in this region of the world. Actually, we are very uh, well versed in this kind of fermented mm, seafood. Yes, and it's all in our food. We just didn't know like mm. the rumpa la, all these kind of things. Like all has it your ba chow me, you know, like they have all some sort of like a seafoody thing. You know, so, it's all inside the umami flavor comes from these. So you must bring ah uh, balachan. All right, I think that's my uh, number one advice for you. Of course, the other thing will be like pre-packed one, bakute, la, you know, some of these other sauce, but trust me, balachan, uh, if you want, you bring some chai po, lo, you know, uh, those things that are light, relatively light and easy to bring around. Okay, sauces is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> so you bring sauce, a oyster bit of a, sauce. Uh, a bit of oyster sauce can, la, a bit of a stretch, but uh, I would say most of the big cities they will have, you can buy it at a premium. Asian supermarkets. Asian right? supermarkets, right? Uh, but it's a bit of a stretch. Uh, another thing maybe you can bring is a dehydrated coconut milk. You know, the dried ones. So when you cook <laughs> your curry and all that, you can just use that. So these are like, 
I know lah, fresh is best lah, but you're traveling, right? So, so you know, these are some options for you. A real world yeah, advice. But- <laughs> okay, a real world one, this one. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I've never thought of all this yet. Uh, yeah, because not, not, I'm not travel influencer, like all fake one, all the video. It's, it's always a traveler lens, right? When yeah. you're a tourist and when you're living there, things are really much more different. It's different. Mm, mm. So really appreciate the insights. Lah. But I want to come to a point. Since you travel uh, around so much, right? What credit card do you actually use? I actually don't use credit card. That's the thing, right? Okay, my my uh, the card that I use is Wise. I use Wise because uh, they have a lot of currency, you know, transfers and it's cheaper. And mm. uh, these days are a bit questionable. I think the ringgit and the US dollar they adjust their their fees, so not as cheap already, yeah. Uh. But broadly speaking, Wise is still cheaper than Money Changer and you know all the. All, all those kind of like bank mm. services. Wise is very cheap. So I use it um, for my travels, especially when I move around different currencies. Uh, Wise allow me to to have that. Yeah. yeah. But but you know that there are a lot of competitors around this kind of no yeah, like FX Revolut, like space, trip, right? like all those kind of guys, right? Yeah. Yes, I can name them not. So. Can not. Okay, yeah, Revolut, <laughs> like U Trip, like all those guys. Uh, <clears throat> but I use Wise because Firstly, I went to Georgia and uh, the Georgian lira is a rare currency. Only Wise provided that service. Oh. Uh, if you do U-Trip, they do within the region only, right? Bat la, Dong la, all those things they have. You know, but out of the region is also so, 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 so la. You know, mm. but yes, it is true that there are more and more providers, but so far Wise is the, the best provider mm. la. I, I'm not shilling this thing. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, on my channel, I always like, have this card that I use. It's called the Instagram Amaze. Not sure if you've heard of it. Instant? Instagram a in- maze. Oh, okay, okay. I know, I yeah. know. Yes, I know the card. You know the mm. card, right? So it kind of like give you rewards on top of your normal credit card, mm-hmm. and you don't have to top up anything. Mm. So if you want to explore that, we can talk about it off the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. And thank you, Reggie, for really sharing all these very interesting insights. I would say, like for people to really consider that digital nomad route, as well as traveling cheaply, right, mm. instead of tourists, and also how to actually like keep your job while you're traveling. Mm. I think that is always an interesting perspective that we should look at mm. rather than we always look at the normal ways of traveling yeah so appreciate it um, and if you haven't followed Reggie you can go to his podcast it's called The Financial Coconut they debunk all the financial myths and all that personal finance stuff investing and all that yeah so thank you Reggie for your time and that's a wrap